Some people around the net know me under my nickname Tricky. Other people know me by the name of my old World of Warcraft character, Rachel. And my programmer's name is Fantasar Productions. In this short video, I'm going to demonstrate the secrets of Deert. It's a full scale RPG game. As you can see, I try to make it a bit in the old SNES style. Well, the controls of the basic game are pretty easy. You can either use your keyboard or a gamepad to move your character around, like this. Or you can decide to control your character by using the mouse, like this. Well, as you can see, the game uses a Pathfinder routine. So, when there are obstacles in the way, the character will just walk around it. Of course, when it is impossible to reach the spot you pointed in any sort of way, like when I'm clicking here, the computer will just ignore your request. Well, I made this game trying to keep things as simple as possible. And thus, I made the menu screen pretty basic. Well, I think the icons in the menu above speak for themselves. The first one is using items you collected on the way. This one is for magic spells or special moves. Eravonia, for example, is your magician. So you can see that she most of all has magic spells. Rebecca, for that matter, is one of the warrior type. So her moves are most of all based on power. This icon is for both the status and your equipment. Well, this is of course the name of the character, your HP, experience level, blah blah blah. Important to note is that your experience will in this game count backwards. So, Maria simply has to score 3113 points in order to reach level 31. Well, let's just make a quick explanation of the other stats. Strengths. Well, influence how hard you hit the enemy. Defense is how much defense you have against it. Intelligence. On Maria, it's a bit of a junk stat, but it influences magic spells. Resistance is your, re is your resistance against magic. Accuracy is how likely it is that you actually hit your enemy when you attack him. Evasion is your dodge rate. And agility basically depends on how fast you may act in battle. More about that later. These stats are basically the status ailments. Confusion, curse, death, destruction, well, they are pretty much the basic ones you can have in an RPG game. The percentages behind it is how much resistance you have against it. Basically, it means that when Maria is hit by a sleep spell, she has no resistance at all and she will basically always fall asleep. When she is hit by a confusion spell, she has 45% to resist the confusion and will thus not get confused. These 
are the elemental resistances the percentage basically determine um, how much percent of the damage is subtracted when you are hit by that element and this is the equipment the thief's knife is now displayed with a treasure chest because in this alpha version there was no proper icon for it yet this will of course be the case in the stable release you can use your gamepad or keyboard to select your weapon your armor and your jewel simply press the confirm button and you equip stuff well that is pretty easy last but not least are these stats aside from the normal leveling you can also level your skills in Marion's case that's dagger skills and rogue skills dagger skills basically go up whenever Maria performs a regular attack rogue skills are in order to boost Maria's abilities as being a rogue and whenever a rogue skill goes up it is possible Maria learns a new move Eravonia has a similar system only then with four elemental magic groups and so all characters have their own setup in this well this icon seems very obvious to me just change your formation oh not so fast these are the achievements or trophies as you want to call them you can just scroll through this to have a good look on everything they are categorized making it easier to find them or at least that was my intention well in case you have a game jolt account and you have locked in the game to game jolt every trophy you will make in game will also be locked on game jolt and this icon is your configuration well I'm not going to explain everything I think it's pretty self-explaining it's pretty important that you set this out well basically you can leave these ones until where I place the cursor now to the default values and then you just have the default settings when you prefer to use a gamepad I recommend you to set these values pretty well it's just a matter of selecting the option pressing the button on your gamepad that you desire for that particular item the importance is this is so great because I cannot really set up a default for you as this is not only depending on your own personal preferences but also on the brand of your controller and my experience is that nearly every brand of controller or gamepad differs well language in this video I will remain it to, to English but you can also set it to Netherlands which means just Dutch well you can play a bit with this and if you desire you can change the color of your text box for this video I will just keep it on the default settings and this is just to quit the game no need to demonstrate that right now well let's play a bit well that blue orb is just a safe spot of course you can just stand next to a character 
and press the confirm button to talk with him or her. This character is a stone master. There are several ones spread out in the game. And they can make your life in the game a lot easier. What you need to do business with them is of course money. And magic stones. Magic stones are not easily given. So plan pretty well what you do with them. Well, these are the things that this particular stone master can work out. Resistance again, light attack, darkness attack, thunder, the status change, sleep, frost, well. Basically, if I want to give Eric some extra protection against light, I pick light, then I pick Eric. Well, the game already states that I don't need any money for this update, but I do require one stone. And now, his light resistance has been raised by 2%. And you can see now that the next update requires money. The amount of money you require and the amount of stones you require is really dependent on how many points you already have. And this also explains pretty much why Cindy needs so much for this update. Well, let's get out of town. Well, don't be bothered by this picture. We are working hard to get it replaced. Let's pick up a um, dungeon here, shall we? Mm, yeah, Esquacunda prison will serve nice. Well, as I already played this dungeon before, I cannot activate the switch anymore, but when you get here for the first time, the door here would be closed, flip the switch and the door would open, blah blah blah. Well, this red seal has no value in this stage of the game, but when you are near completion, there is an optional boss sealed in it. Always nice to know. What is pretty important when you are playing dungeons is this big number. Now it says 16. That is basically your traveler's level. You can sometimes skip encounters and the likability of skipping encounters is just by the height of that number. In a normal playthrough, the maximum is 20. When you're playing the new game plus, this will be 30. Well, every character has also a unique ability. And this ability is required to get further in this particular room. You can pick with who you want to walk around. In this case we need this girl, Maria. She has the unique ability to scan the room and show that there is a secret passage here on the east. Well. Well, I couldn't skip this combat. It was a combat of a too high level for a level 16 traveling. Well, let's get to the basics of combat. As you can see on the top of the bar below, you see all icons depicting our heroes. They go from left to right and we, when they reach the com point or or rather the boundary between blue and red, you can enter the move. Normal attack, 
switch with someone on the back line. Card, use items, or cast a spell. Ah, well, that is just a coincidence that it has to happen right now. Cindy filled the requirements for a new move, so she will learn it right now. Ah, remove cars. Not a bad move to learn. Ah! Did you see that message, Oversoul? When you beat a certain enemy multiple times, one of them will go over Sol and be significantly stronger than they would normally be. Mm, oh, let's use a magic spell. Yeah, let's go overkill. Let's use Inferno. Now, let's also discuss what we see above, of course. The upper line here are your HP. Nothing to explain here for an experienced RPG player. The blue bar is your AP or ability points. The maximum of ability points is always your general level multiplied by 10. The amount of points you begin with is reset every battle and is overall determined uh, by how much skill levels you acquired and each character has a unique formula in how this is calculated you get extra you get additional ability points whenever you perform a normal attack or when you get attacked of course performing an ability costs ability points so you need really need to plan this out quite well but as the start of the ability points resets every battle you can go a bit overboard you don't have to save up for later battles ah there we saw Eric's move could grass pop up every character has his or her own unique ability which he or she will automatically use when the time is right. In Eric's case, Good Grass will just kill the enemy instantly when the enemy is below a certain percentage of each HP. Oh, another spell for Cindy. Yeah, well, this spell was not yet animated. It will be in the final version. Well, apparently I uh, did something very right to gain so much levels. <laughs> Another nice thing to note, which not many RPG games have, is this here. You see here, Ank Arm. Yes, it is basically what it implies. Encounters on. Does this mean we can turn it off? Certainly. By turning encounters off, you will get no more random encounters. Scripted encounters, such as boss fights, will however just take place as normally. You should keep in mind though, that you cannot turn off encounters initially you always have to fill a certain requirement. For most dungeons it's simply completing the dungeon just once. Other dungeons require you to perform a certain task to do this. The system has been brought to life for the completest guys out there. In case you forgot something in a dungeon or in case there are any sorts of side quests you didn't do in the dungeon you can now come back for those and try to sort them out without being bothered by enemies which could be 
too easy for you at the time as you did the dungeon already long before and that you should be quite some levels higher. This red seal is a perfect example for which this system could be handy. Of course when you want a full bestiary the system is not quite as handy. <laughs> well, and so far this demonstration for now. I hope that I gave you quite some views on how to play this game or what to expect when you are going to play the full game. I hope to see you when the full version of the game is uh, finally ready. Catch you later!